Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today, we will be completing the quest A Kingdom Divided. Quest requirements are The Ascent of Archaeus, The Depths of Despair, Forsaken Tower, The Queen of Thieves, Tale of the Righteous, as well as the mini quest The Architectural Alliance. Skill requirements are 35 Magic, 38 Crafting, 42 Mining, 50 Herb Law, 52 Woodcutting and Thieving, as well as 54 Agility. Items needed any kind of axe that you can use, a regular defense potion, molten glass, one fire bolt, blast wave or surge spell, and you must be able to cast that spell, so be sure to be on the regular spellbook. Next, you either will need to have a chisel, any kind of pickaxe and a face mask, or you must already have the volcanic sulfur and one dark essence block. It's either of the two, I will be getting the Volcanic Sulfur as well as the Dark Essence block in the middle of this quest because I don't have it and I don't really think many people will have it in their banks. If you do, then later in this guide you can skip a part of this guide. For the recommended items, as always, some weight reducing clothes, but these will be needed at the end of the quest. Then also 3 stamina potions will be very helpful, because I don't have those, I will be replacing them with super energies. Also, one prayer potion, because the boss of this quest drains a lot of prayer points, and an antidote will be very nice. Then also some food, armor and weapon to kill combat 91, 132, 168 and 239. For the combat 168, it must be defeated by using melee, so I will be using a dragon scimitar. The combat 168 is a demon, so if you would have an arc light, this would be your best in slot, but I don't have 75 attack, so I will be using a Dragon Scimitar. For the combat 238, that is a magic user and must be defeated by using melee or ranged. But ranged is its weakness, so I will be banking before the boss fight to grab my ranged armor and weapon. Then also at least one empty inventory slot. For the teleports, that's gonna be a bunch. I'm going to be bringing along at least 3 teleports to the current castle, then 4 teleports to Lovakens using the memoirs, 3 teleports to Piscarillus, once again memoirs, 1 teleport to the 4th of ruins, uh, once again I will be using the memoirs, 3 teleports to Wintertide, I will be using the games necklace, 2 teleports to the Kebos Lowlands, I will be using a Faring Code CIR, Two teleports to the Hosidius Town. The fastest way will be using the Xeric Salesman and the Glade option, but I will be using the Memoirs. Two teleports to North of Shazian. I will be using the Faring Code DJR. Two teleports to the Shazian Lookout. Fastest way will be using the Xeric Salesman, but once again I will be using the Memoirs. One teleport to the Corrent Woodland. You could run there from Shazian, or you could use the Rala's Blessing Teleport. I will be using that one. One Teleport to Mount Karloom. I will be using, if you have the Heart or Elite Diary completed, you could use the Blessing Teleport. But I will be using the Fairy Ring Code CIR once again. And finally, one Teleport to Arceus. That's gonna be another Memoirs Teleport. So in grand total, I will be using approximately at least 15 charges of the Karit's memoirs in this guide. So I'm standing here in a bank because I'm not going to be using all of this stuff. At the start of the quest you will need to fight the first demi boss, which is the demon of Comet 168 which must be defeated by using melee so use your arc light or melee armor. And the running part of the quest is at the end, so I'm gonna be depositing my weight reducing armor and also my pickaxe, chisel and face mask because I will be getting the volcanic sulfur as well as the dark essence block when needed at the end of the quest. Since I now have a bit more space, I will be using, I will bring along one extra energy potion and for the rest is gonna be some food for the first demi boss fight. I think that's gonna be it. Just be sure that you have at least one empty inventory slot. So, where to start this quest is just east of the current castle. Once you're here at the courtyard, just go a bit east until you see the quest start. There, you should find Martin Holt. Let's talk to him and select option 1.
After speaking to him, we will need to enter the current castle. So you could be running west or simply teleport back. Enter the castle and in the first room you should find a large table. Behind it you should find Commander Fulor. Talk to her. Select option 1 because every time you speak to her there will be a cutscene. And you will be speaking to her quite often during this quest. Alright, once the cutscene is over, let's continue the conversation and enter the house just north. West, go up into the staircase, and then go enter the eastern room. Next to the door, you'll find some drawers. Search it to find a receipt. Inspect it, click to continue, and then let's make our way to the Lovakensh pub. I'll be reminiscing and teleporting to Lovakensh option number 4. Just east of the teleport, they will find the pub. Enter it, and near the counter you should find Fuggy, the dwarf. Talk to him and select option 3. After the earthquake and talking to Fuggy, let's make our way to Piscorellius. I'm going to be using the reminis I'm going to be using the memoirs option 2. Next, we will be needed to fight the Comet 168 demon that must be defeated by using melee. If you're not prepared, go to the Piscorellius bank and prepare. And once you think you are prepared, let's go to Vias on the Piscorellius dock and instead of Vias, you should find Cabin Boy Herbert. Talk to him and select option 2 to start the boss fight. Now the boss must be defeated by using melee, and sometimes it will be teleporting you away from him. And once he does that, there will be three waves of fire coming towards you, with one tile of a gap in between them. You will need to walk through those three gaps before making your way back to the boss. Hit it with melee a couple of times until he teleports you again. Simply use Protect for Melee once you're close to him and use Protect for Magic while you are away from him. Simply use the gaps. Do not hesitate, do not go too quickly, just pass through three, three walls of fire. Did I just die? What the fuck, three? There should be four. There were four. Oh my god, what was that? Don't do it too quickly. Just pass through the walls of fire. God damn it, these walls of fire are so annoying. Don't do it too quickly. Walk a bit north if you're not gonna make it in time.
I prefer to walk a bit north and do it slowly than taking a lot of damage. Son of a bitch! One more, come on. Yay. God dang it, what was that? Almost died to the judge of Yama. Oh my god, what a noob am I. Right, after you've defeated the judge of Yama, let's face the camera north, and just south, just a bit southwest, there you'll find a back door of the castle. Exit the castle, and there you should find Command of Law, just outside. Let's talk to her. After speaking to her, we will need to talk to Martin Holt. You could be running all the way back northeast, or simply use another current castle teleport. Let's talk to Martin. After the conversation is over with Martin, we will need to make our way to the Archaeos Library. I'll be using the memoirs and teleporting to Lovakenj. From the teleportation spot from Lovakenj, just go a bit east-northeast, and then you've already made it to the Library of Archaeos. Enter the library of Archaeus, and next to you, they should find Archaeo. Let's right-click and teleport. Next, right-click on some NPCs until you find Estonia. Pickpocket. Then go to the southeastern corner, and search the pink display case. Next, let's use our final current castle teleport. And we'll need to make our way back to Martin. And on our way there, let's read Rose's diary. Click to continue, and let's speak with Martin. He will trade in the diary for a note. Click on the note to read it, then close and continue the conversation. Be sure to do that. Next, we will need to make our way to the Fourth of Ruins. I'll be using a Hosidius teleport. Here at these ruins, just north, they'll find Martin Holt once again. Let's talk to him and select option 4. After speaking to him, we will need to solve a puzzle which is random for everyone. So, let's go a bit south to the center and then go a bit southeast to the southeastern corner. And there should find a stone pile. First, I want to empty my chat box and then search a stone pile, and then we'll find R equals a random number between 0 and 9. Click to continue, and then write down the number in your chat box. Next, go to the western side, and there we'll find two more stone piles. First, search the northern one to find the O. 
O equals random number. Write your number down in the chat box. Next, just behind you, search that pile. S equals random number. Write that one down as well. Then go a bit east and they'll find the last stone pile. Search it. E equals random number. Write that down. And that will be your four numbers. Next, let's go to the northwestern corner and chop the vines. Once those are chopped, squeeze through the vines. Two tiles north, one tile east, they'll find a panel. Be sure to memorize your four numbers, 25, 43 for me. Check the panel. Write down your numbers. And then you should receive a note. Squeeze through the vines. Uh, before we talk to Martin, read the note and then talk to Martin. Select option 4 once again. Next, let's teleport to Winterdot and go to the bank. Let's prepare to fight a Comet 132, which only uses melee, as well as the main boss fight, which is gonna be against the Comet 239, which is weak to ranged, but melee is fine if you are a higher combat level than me. So, for the main boss fight, it's a magic user that is weak to ranged, so I will be swapping all my melee gear for some ranged gear. Then the boss could also drain a lot of your prayer points by causing corruption onto you, so be sure to bring a full prayer potion when you... Also bring an antidote, because we're gonna be passing an aggressive Lizardman Brute. And besides from that, I'm going to be bringing a full inventory of food with two empty inventory slots open for the next segments of the quest. But before the boss fight, we will still need to run quite a lot. But you will need at least two empty inventory slots. But I'm going to be bringing along extra energy potions because I don't own any stamina potions. And I'm just going to be dropping them if I have too many. Right, let's run south. As if we're running south to Arceus. Keep following the path until the fork. Take the northern one. Until you see another fork going north and south. Next one, go south until you see a lot of ice giants, ice spiders and ice wolves, as well as some ruins. Once you're there, keep running west. So you can't go any further. In the final building, they'll find in the northwestern corner a, a yellow NPC. That is Martin. Let's talk to Martin and you will get attacked by a Comet 132 assassin. So before talking to him, maybe use protect from melee. Oh fuck, I forgot about this guy. Right, after you've defeated the assassin, continue your conversation with Martin. And now it's time for another small puzzle. So, once you have one, at least one empty inventory slot, let's go a bit southwest until you see your first tree. North of it, they'll find some ice chunks. Go to your magic spellbook and cast Firebolt onto it. Next, search it to find a key. Next, go a bit back to Martin, and just west of him, they'll find another panel. Check it to find a note. Click to read. Once you have this note, let's return to Martin and speak with him. Select option 4 once again. Next, we will need to make our way to the Piscarillus giant pub. So I will be using the Piscarillus teleport with the memoirs and running south. We'll need to go to the giant pub just south of Piscarillus. Once you've made it to the pub, let's talk to Martin here. 
and after speaking to him next to the bar you should find a pillar that you can climb. Let's climb it. And then in the northwestern corner you should find another panel. Open, check it and then open up your notepad. Because once again this is random for everyone, but this time you will need to write down the city names that is written on this panel. So for me, it is this. Write down the order the city names are written on this plaque, click to continue and go back downstairs. And just east of Martin they will find 5 big statues. You will need to inspect and select option 1 on every single statue in order. And the order is written on the plaque upstairs. So be sure to do that right now. Once you've pressed the final statue, if it was the correct order, you should hear a click sound. Let's climb up the pillar once again and go to the panel to get another note. You should trigger a cutscene of Martin Holtz getting arrested. We will free him later in this quest. But before we're going to be doing that, let's read the Rose's note and then close it. Next, we will need to make our way to the Cabo's Lowlands. I'll be using... <gasps> no! Next, we will need to make our way to the Cabo's Lowlands, but I forgot my fairy ring teleport. So I'm going to be quickly going to the Bank of Wintertide. Oh my god. Right, let's make our way to the Cabo's Lowlands. I will be using fairy ring near the Ardoin Monastery to teleport myself to the fairing code CIR. Next, once you are in the Cabos Lowlands, go a bit west from the fairing and enter the shack. In the northeastern corner you should find a bed. Search it to find a tidy note. Read it, then close, and then the crates in the northwestern corner should have an inspect option. If they don't, be sure to read Rose's note as well. Select option 1 to climb down to trigger another cutscene. Right, after the conversation is over, it is time for the boss fight. Kind of. First we need to do some running around. So let's go back upstairs and run south. We are now to make our way to Mulch. To get to Mulch, you simply need to run south. Right, here at the temple, quickly gonna be recharging my prayer points. 
and then run east as if you're going to the Lizardman Shamans. So just east of this pyramid, you would find the dungeon sign just north, enter the dwelling, enter the Lizardman dwelling, and then go east. Just east, you should find an NPC called Kat Balam. Talk to him and select option 2. And he will request an item, which is a Lizardman egg. To get his egg, we will need to go to the southwestern part of Mulch. So, let's run west, and keep running west until you see a strange hole that you can jump into. Let's enter the strange hole, and then run south. Here at the first T-junction, go a bit west, and continue this path going west. You will cross the first bridge out of two. Keep running, keep following the path west until you see another T-junction. Here at the next T-junction, go south, cross the final bridge, and on this island you should find a couple of piles of lizardman eggs. We will need to search the southeastern one, but once you do, a Comet 75 brute will start attacking you. You can simply ignore it. Take an egg and run back north. Run back north and then back east to return to Kat Balam to deliver the egg and then you will have access to the boss room. Right, just east of the pyramid, enter the Lizardman dwelling, run a bit east and return to Karbalam. Select option 1. Next, go a bit west, once you have the key, they will find some bones on the northern tiles. Two squares east of it, they will find a door. Open it by using the key. Next, select option 1, yes, to enter. Once you go north and open the second gate, the boss fight will start. So if you're not sure that you're able to fight the Comet 239 magic user that is weak to ranged and will drain a little bit of your prayer, be sure to bank and prepare and then come back here. Once you think you are prepared, first I want you to do is to turn off your run energy as well as turn off your auto retaliate. Next, use Protect from Magic from start to finish of the boss fight. Now the three things that you will need to keep in mind during the boss fight. Avoid the Mark of Darkness tiles that are on the floor, and then the boss will have two special attacks. One, there will be hands falling on top of you, and you will need to walk around the room while avoiding the Mark of Darkness to avoid taking any of the falling hands attacks. The second special attack is that he will summon two low-level minions of which have 12 HP. You will need to defeat those minions before you're able to continue attacking the boss. So the most difficult one is just the falling hands and just walking around the room. Keep using Protect for Magic and you should be fine.
Once you've defeated the boss, once you've defeated the boss, do not do anything. Do not click anywhere, else you will be out of the cutscene. If you do happen to get out of the cutscene, just simply enter the door once again, and you do not have to fight Xampha once again. Once the cutscene is over, go a bit north and search the table for another note. Close it. This is basically everything that we had to do for boss fights in this quest. Now the only thing left is just some running around and cutscenes. Also we'll need to fight one more assassin of Comet 132, but that wasn't too difficult before. First, let's make our way back to the Cabos Lowlands shack, so I will be using another teleport to my ferrowing. We will be going to a bank shortly to deposit our heavy armor and stuff and grabbing our graceful or weight reducing clothes. Right, once you've made it back to the Cabos Lowlands shack, let's inspect the crates to start another cutscene. After the cutscene is over, we will need to make our way to Lovakench. And I will be going to Lovakench and going to the bank, because just next to the bank is where we'll actually need to go. After the cutscene is over, let's make our way to Lovakench. I will be using the Caretz Memoirs. Select option 4. Just go a bit southwest to the bank. In the bank I'm gonna be depositing all my heavy stuff and I'm gonna be grabbing my weight reducing clothes. But what I am gonna be grabbing from my bank is either the volcanic sulfur as well as the dark essence block, or if you don't have these right now, you need to bring along any pickaxe, your face mask and a chisel. Aside from that, bring along your weight reducing clothes, 
as well as a weapon to kill a Comet 132 Assassin once again. Aside from that, I'm just gonna be bringing along some super energies. Right, once you are ready for the next part, let's continue running west to the quest start of the Forsaken Tower, which is just west of the bank. Just west of the bank, let's open the door and talk to Lady Lovakinch. After speaking to her, I'm gonna be running north, northwest to the volcanic sulfur mine to grab myself one volcanic sulfur. Therefore, you must have a pickaxe and a face mask. If you already have volcanic sulfur in your inventory, then you can skip this part. Right, here's the mine, let's quickly grab one and get out of here. Right, once you have the volcanic sulfur at least, let's make our way to the Tower of Magic to talk to our chaos. I will be using once again a Lovakench teleport and simply running northeast. Because the Tower of Magic is even closer to the Lovakench teleport than the Archaeus library is because it is just west of the library. Right, just west of the library, let's enter the tower, go upstairs and talk to Lord Arceus. Lord Arceus, let's talk to him. And after speaking to him, let's talk to Lord Hasidius. The fastest way to get there would be using the Xeric Talisman and the Glade option, but since I don't have that unlocked, I'm gonna be using the Hasidius Teleport and running a little bit further east. And just a bit southeast of the market town, you'll find a huge mansion and inside they'll find Lord Hosidius. Let's talk to him. And after speaking to him, let's talk to Lord Shazian. And he's located north of Shazian in the encampment, which is pretty close to the fairing code DJR. So I'm going to be using that teleport to get there. You, could also use the, you can also use the memoirs and run north but I think the fairing will be a little bit closer. All right, from the fairing code DJR, just go a bit southeast to the bank of Shazian, and south of it they'll find a war tent. Go inside and go up the ladder. Once up the ladder, they'll find only one NPC, Lord Shazian. Let's talk to him. Once you've spoken to Lord Shazian, let's make our way to Piscarilius. And just east of Piscarilius, they'll find the dungeon sign. Let's enter the manhole. And just like with the Queen of Thieves quest, we will need to talk to Lady Piscarilius. She's in the most northwestern tent. Let's enter the doorway. Talk to Lady Piscarilius, and that should be number 5 from all the lords and ladies. After speaking to her, we will need to make our way to the Xerix Lookout. The fastest way to get there would be to use the Xerix Talisman and using the Lookout option, 
But since I don't have that, I will be teleporting myself to the Graveyard of Heroes here in the middle of Shazian and simply running southeast east. Once you've reached the sword shop, just go a bit southeast and you've made it to the lookout. Let's enter it and talk to Commander Fulo. Alright, after the cutscene is over, we will need to do five things. One thing for every lord and lady. First, uh, just a bit next to you, they'll find a ladder going down. Do so, and they'll find Lord Osidius. Well, let's talk to him. Next, let's go upstairs and go to the first floor. There you should find Shazian. Talk to him. And after speaking to Shazian, let's go up once again to the second floor. And they'll find Lovakensh. Talk to her. Next, go to the top floor and talk to Piscarillius. And after speaking to her, we will need to go back to the main floor. And on the main floor, we will need to talk to Command of Floor and select option 1 about Mrs. Lovakensh. After speaking to her, we will need to exit the. After speaking to her, go a bit west, exit the lookout, and talk to Arceus. Next, let's do the five things that the Lord and Ladies want us to do. The first thing I want to do is get the combat ones out of the way first, so we will be killing the combat 132 in just a moment. So let's teleport to Shazian, and just west of the graveyard they will find a dungeon sign. Click on the minimap and go into the Shazian prison. Once there, go a bit south and in the center. And in the center prison, they'll find Martin Holt. Talk to him. And after talking to Martin, we will need to make our way back to the Shazian graveyard. So the fastest way we'll just do teleport back up there and then go a bit southeast. South of the church, they'll find a NPC called Jora. Use Protect from Melee because you'll get ambushed by a Comet 132 Assassin. Gonna be using Protect from Melee, talk to Jora and select option 2.
Be sure to leave your prayers on, else you will not be continuing the quest. They will need to kill the assassin once again. Continue the conversation with Jorah, and then turn off your prayers. First, let's read the declaration, click to continue, and close it. That's already 1 out of 5 done. Next, let's kill the Comet 91. Next, we'll need to go to the Corrent Woodlands Barbarian Outpost. You can simply run south, go through the gate, and run a bit southeast until you've made it to that dungeon sign, or simply use Rada's Blessing. And from there, go a bit southeast to the Barbarian Outpost. Enter the prison of the Barbarians, which is at the dungeon sign. There, you should find the Barbarian Warlord. Defeat him, and then you can free the prisoner. Right, once you've defeated the final NPC that you will need to defeat, let's talk to the prisoner. And that is 2 out of 5 done. So next, I would like to go to the Hosidius Vinery, which is just east of the mansion of Hosidius. And because we don't need to fight anything anymore, I'm gonna go to the Vinery's bank and deposit all of my weapons and armor. So, just east of the mansion of Lord Hosidius, let's go to the bank of the Vinery, which is on the northern side. I'm gonna quickly deposit all this heavy stuff. And then I'm gonna go south. South of the Vinery, they'll find two wine barrels. Search the eastern one to find a hidden room. Next, in the northwestern corner, pick lock the chest. It is a lot easier to do this with a lockpick. If you fail, get a lockpick or just keep trying until you succeed and get the Shadian journal. Read it and then click to continue. There is already 3 out of 5 completed. For the next thing, we will need at least one Dark Essence block as well as the Volcanic Sulfur. I already have gotten the Volcanic Sulfur, so now the Dark Essence block remains. So therefore, I'm gonna be using a Winter Tot teleport and I'm gonna be running all the way to the Essence Mine to get myself one Dark Essence block. If you already have one in your bank or in your inventory, then you can skip this part and teleport to Mount Carloom and use the elevators to talk to the three Machamps.
Right, this essence block penetrate, and this should be a dark one. Right, I finally got both items. Let's make our way to Mount Karloom. That is gonna be for me another. Are you fucking kidding me? I just banked the cape again. I still need to go to DJR. Are you kidding me? Right, let's make our way to Mount Karloom. And I'm just going to be using the code CIR to get there. Alright, once you've made it to the top of Mount Karloom, let's go activate the elevator and go inside the volcano. There, let's go a bit north and talk to the three Machamps. Once you've spoken to them, they will teach you how to make a volcanic potion, I think. To make this, you will need to use volcanic sulfur on a regular defense potion. Right, once you get these two options, let's use the sulfur on the defense potion, then talk to the three Machamps once again, and they will make it into a shielding potion. Teleport to Wintertard, and go use it on the doors of Din just north, to complete number 4 out of 5. Be sure to right click and use it on the doors of Din. Alright, now just for Lord number 5, let's make our way to Arceus, to the Arceus Church, which is just a bit north of where you can teleport with your book or memoirs. So it's north of where you can make the uh, Arceus teleport tablets, enter the building, just like with the Soul Bearer, climb the stairs, go a bit east, and be sure that you have your Molten Glass and your Dark Essence block. On the other side, on the eastern side, go back downstairs and you'll find Mori. Talk to him and he will trade these two for another item. Right, once you have the Dark Nullifier, we'll now need to make our way to the Chasm of Fire, which is next to DJR. So once again, I'm gonna be using a Fairy Ring Teleport. Right, just a bit west from DJR, let's try to enter the Chasm of Fire by clicking on the rope. You will not actually enter, but this will complete task number 5 out of 5. Now we just need to do one more thing. Go back to the lookout, talk to all the 5 lords and ladies to basically complete this quest. I still don't have a lookout teleport on my Xerix Talisman, so I'm just gonna be running east, southeast.
Right, first let's talk to Arceus to complete his task. Then I'm going downstairs to talk to Hasidius. Let's complete his task, which was about killing the barbarian, freeing the prisoner. Then let's go upstairs to the first floor. And let's talk to uh, Shazian, complete his task to deliver the journal. Then, second floor, talk to Lovakench. To provide the declaration. And then finally, the top floor, let's talk to Piscorilius. Something about the disciples of Yama. Right, let's go back downstairs and let's talk to Commander Fulo to sort the second to last cutscene. First we have a suicidal case and next they will choose who wants to be the next king of the Great Quran. But actually nobody wants to. That's just basically what is going to be happening here. And you're going to be king of the Great Quran. No, just kidding though. Once the cutscene is over, let's head down to the basement and speak with Kanda Hasidis for the final time. Once you've done that, let's go back upstairs, talk to Commander Fulo for the final cutscene of this quest. Be sure to select option 1 with her. And then, congratulations, you have completed the Kingdom Divided quest. You are awarded with 2 quest points. The Karis Memoirs are now upgraded to the Book of the Dead, which has a plus 6 magic attack bonus and plus 3 prayer bonus, and is also needed to cast resurrection spells. You are also awarded with an antique lamp of 10,000 experience that can be used on any skill if it is at least level 40 or above. Ability to set your respawn point to the current castle by talking to Asterus Arceus on the first floor of the current castle. And finally, you now also have full access to the Archaeus spellbook.
And this was my guide how to complete a kingdom divided. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye. This is definitely gonna be going on Slayer.